For over a century now, we have been able to register images of objects through photography. But even in the most modern camera, pictures are produced as a geometric representation of a three-dimensional object on a plane, which was already known in ancient times. A flat photograph imitates the three-dimensionalness of the object better or worse, depending on the lighting of the object being photographed and the background. With the invention of the laser, photography is no longer the only technique of registering images of the object. A new technique has appeared which produces true three-dimensional images and gives totally new possibilities by taking advantage of light's wave properties. Holography. This marvelous natural source of light emits radiation of a very wide spectrum. Solar light, which is received by the eye as white, is in fact a mixture of colors. In other words, waves of different wavelengths. Other sources that substitute the sun emit light of a similar spectrum. Let's turn on the laser. It emits monochromatic radiation, which in fact has one wavelength. And, what is particularly important, it is coherent light. In other words, light with constant phase relations. The expanded laser light beam is also coherent and can be presented by means of wave fronts. In a parallel beam, they are planes. If we cross this beam with another similar one, we will obtain a stationary interference region. Waves in phase cause the amplification. Waves opposite in phase cause the fading of light. Interference fringes appear which spatial frequency depends on the angle between light beams. If we register them on photosensitive material, we shall obtain diffraction grating. When we insert this grating into a light beam, diffracted beams form with the illuminated beam the same angle as in the registration process. And what does the interference pattern of a plane wave with a wave produced by point source look like? Circular fringes appear, which form a concentric diffraction grating of a diminishing density towards the center. Let's illuminate it with a parallel beam a converge and diverge beam appear. The converge beam forms a holographic real image of the point. The diverge beam forms a second virtual image, precisely in the place where the source of light was. We have obtained the holographic images of the point. Every physical body is an aggregate of points, and each of them can be thought of as the point source of light. So if we direct the straight and reflected beams of coherent light onto a photosensitive plate, we shall record an aggregate of interference patterns, like in the case of one point. We will record the hologram of the whole object independently of its size, 
and complexity. Let's build an optical system for such a registration. Laser, beam splitter, lenses expanding the laser beam, mirror, photosensitive plate, and lens and mirror in the second beam illuminating the object. The photosensitive plate is illuminated simultaneously by the straight reference beam and by the light reflected from the object. The recorded interference pattern of these two beams is a hologram of the object. Here we have a somewhat extended system designed for holographic registration of large objects. All its elements must be mounted very stably. Special high resolution photosensitive materials are used for the registration of holograms. The exposed holographic plate then undergoes photochemical treatment and drying. Let's put it into its previous place and illuminate it only with a straight reference beam. A holographic image of the object has been reconstructed. We can see it with the naked eye. It has the same optical properties as the original object. The fidelity in recording details and the complete three-dimensionalness give the impression of viewing the real object through a window. We can reconstruct the holographic image from any fragment of the hologram. It can be seen from different angles because each point of the hologram viewed the object from different angles. We already know how holographic images of three-dimensional objects are formed. Let's repeat it using a diagram. The converge wave forms one image behind the hologram. The second image appears as the extension of the diverge beam, precisely where the object was. Like the images of a single point. And what does the hologram look like? Seemingly, it is a uniformly exposed plate. Only by applying great magnification can the complicated interference structure be seen. The hologram contains so much information that each small fragment can be used to reconstruct a rather good image of the whole object. But images reconstructed from the whole hologram are of better quality and can be observed from different points. When we look with both eyes, the images are really three-dimensional. In the film, we can show this only by changing the position of the camera. The holographic image can be photographed, like the real object, in detail, and with different focusing of the camera. The fidelity of holographic imaging was most fascinating in the early years of holography, as was later the possibility of reconstructing holograms using white light, and the successful experiments with color holography, or finally, the possibility of holographic recording of movement.